Coming up next on the Rockbridge Report, Hurricane Helene's impending Florida landfall. I mean, rather be safe than sorry, right? We'll tell you when it's hitting, and our own Kelly Knott has your rainy week ahead. And later, several internet dead zones in Rockbridge County are finally getting broadband. We got some bad news for a couple of years, and uh, but but we didn't we didn't quit, and uh, we're not going to for the folks in Vesuvius. After that, a Latin American food festival and soccer tournament celebrates Rockbridge County's fastest growing minority. All that and more coming up right now on the Rockbridge Report. Live from the campus of Washington and Lee University with news from Rockbridge County, this is the Rockbridge Report. Welcome to the Rockbridge Report. I'm Mackenzie Kane. And I'm Valentina Nunez. Hurricane Helene continues to intensify today as it tracks north toward the Florida Panhandle. The storm is expected to make landfall as a major hurricane in Florida's Big Bend region later this evening bringing with it a wind field so large it could span the distance to Rockbridge County. CNN's Michael Yoshida is in Steinhatchee, Florida, where authorities say time has almost run out for those who want to leave. Please leave. Just please do. It's, it's not worth it. Just get out. It'll, it'll either be here when you get back or it won't. Don't leave yourself in harm's way. Officials are begging residents and counties around Florida to heed the warnings and evacuate before it's too late. If you're on the fence about evacuating, please do. Um, go ahead and make that, me let me nudge you on off the fence. Do evacuate. If I wasn't the sheriff, I'd be evacuating <laughs> somewhere else. You can believe it because this is right. not going to be Right, I just didn't know like, if you're like... The storm's far-reaching outer bands already bringing tropical force winds on shore and pushing water onto streets. The monstrous hurricane is slated to slam into Florida's Big Bend Coast Thursday evening, bringing with it dangerous winds, flooding, and storm surges the National Weather Service described as unsurvivable. When you're talking about 120, 125 mile an hour, potentially in Tallahassee, certainly on the coast as that makes landfall, those are not numbers that, that we've seen in recent years. Millions of people around the southeast will feel the impacts from this monster storm, with schools and businesses closing and utility crews staging all around the region. Hurricane Helene is already impacting Rockbridge. Later, Kimmy Knott tells us about the rainy week ahead. And after that, Devin Bateman breaks down how heavy rainfall is moving up game times. In Lexington, water bills for homes and businesses are set to rise. The Rockbridge Report's Bella Timmerding is live on Main Street. Bella, what can you tell us? That's right, Mackenzie. We're here in downtown Lexington where business owners are finding ways to deal with what is likely to be the second increase in water bills this year. Business owners say the price hike could force them to make changes to their business plans, such as cutting unpopular items off the menu. Several owners say COVID-19 already leaned down their operations, so another water bill increase would hurt small businesses in downtown Lexington. In July, Lexington water bills increased 7%. Now, property owners could see an additional 5 to 7 percent increase. The Maury Service Authority proposed the hike in water bills to cover major upgrades to the water treatment plants. The Jackson Avenue sewer is over 100 years old and will be restored through the money collected through the increase. While business owners recognize the hike in water bills is necessary to ensure city infrastructure is up to date, their water usage is essential and cannot be cut back. You trim where you can in terms of expenses. Um, I would also always suggest, um, because I can't, like, I can't use less water. I, I, I mean, the, the amount of water I use is the amount I use. I don't, it's used for washing things. I mean, that's, I can't not wash things. So I'm not, like, wasting a lot of water. But water bills could go up even more. The city wants to add a new fee to improve drainage and to avoid street flooding. Everyone has a shared responsibility for the city to manage that stormwater as it comes from the sky and it ends up in the Chesapeake Bay. Some Lexington residents say they wish they had more of a voice in these types of decisions made by city council that affect all members of the community. We have a lot of intelligent people all around us here. Why not draw on those resources rather than kind of, you know, kind of pitch the ball uh, over the fence to, to some elected officials and potentially others who are, are not as well informed. City Council is expected to vote on the increase in new fee at their October 17th meeting. The groundwater fee would go into effect in a gradual phased increase. Live on Main Street, I'm Bella Timmerding for the Rockbridge Report. Back to you guys in the studio.
Thank you, Bella, for that report. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has been charged with bribery and fraud. Federal prosecutors allege today that Adams received campaign donations from the Turkish government for his 2021 mayoral race and sought to conceal these illegal foreign contributions. Adams is New York's first mayor to be charged with a crime and maintains his innocence. It's an unfortunate day and it's a painful day. But inside of all of that, it's a day where we will finally reveal why for 10 months I have gone through this. In Rockbridge County, more than 425 students miss over 10% of the school year. But the county school board is responding by toughening attendance rules. Some fear the district could lose state funds and accreditation. Parents complain that some county schools haven't shared details of the plan. Read Juliana Stevenson's story at rockbridgereport.wlu.edu. Virginia's abortion funding organizations now face challenges from out-of-state demand. The Blue Ridge Abortion Fund, once meant to serve only Virginia, is now inundated with requests from southern states like Florida and Georgia. The Blue Ridge Fund has seen requests from Florida nearly double, with average travel costs reaching $3,000 per person, higher than any other state. To manage demand, the fund has reduced its call hours and now hits its budget limit almost weekly. Buena Vista just hired a new finance director, Steve Bolster. His first priorities are updating old software to find inefficiencies and wasted money. Bolster says BV's finally coming up after two decades of debt from failed golf course project. Bolster hopes to support renovation efforts to the city's sewer system, as well as classrooms in Perry McClure Middle School. Check out Channing Schilling's story at rockridgereport.academic.wlu.edu. Coming up on the Rockbridge Report, broadband internet is coming to areas of Rockbridge County that have lived without fast speeds for years. But our Liz Trubick found other parts of the county still without quality internet. After that, Echelon Resources says it's ditching plans to build affordable housing in Lexington. We'll break down the issues that sparked the departure. Stay with us here at the Rockbridge Report. Welcome back to the Rockbridge Report. After three attempts in three years, Rockbridge County got a state grant to expand high-speed internet into rural areas. But as Liz Trubeck reports, there is still more work to be done. The $2.2 million grant will extend fiber optic internet to nearly 2,000 homes and businesses in the county. Whether it's telehealth, whether it's remote work, remote education, um, it's critical. I think broadband and internet is, is really a utility now that we must get everywhere on, on an equal footing for everybody to have access. The state requires the county to match the grant funds. The broadband providers are also chipping in to help cover the full cost of the $8.7 million project. But there's still more that needs to be done. Parts of Rockbridge County won't get high-speed internet service. Folks in Vesuvius are still waiting. There's kids down here that would rely on faster internet, or maybe they don't have internet provided to them, so they end up having to go to, like, up to the truck stop to do their homework. But locals aren't the only ones who need internet access, especially in areas that don't have cellular service. This area is a dead zone for cell phones, so if you have cyclists or hikers or tourists coming through and they don't know where they're at, we're a hub where we can actually like provide Wi-Fi to help them figure out what they need to. Rockbridge County Administrator Spencer Suter says the county is still fighting for Griffin and other folks in Vesuvius. We got some bad news for a couple of years, and uh, but but we didn't we didn't quit and uh, we're not going to for the folks in Vesuvius. Homes and businesses in Spring Valley and Buffalo Creek will have high-speed internet service by the end of 2026. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Liz Trubeck. Echelon Resources is ditching its plans to build two apartment complexes in Lexington. The company says construction costs and interest rates are just too high to continue. Many of the apartments planned for Spotswood Drive and the old VDOT site were set to be rented at affordable rates. Lexington City Council wants to look at other developers for the VDOT site. For now, both properties remain vacant. Read Kate Keeley's story at rockbridgereport.wlu.edu. New legal trouble for music mogul Sean P. Diddy Combs. A new lawsuit was filed against the hip-hop artist on this week. The suit accuses Combs and his bodyguard of drugging and assaulting a woman in 2001. This comes just a week after federal agents arrested Combs on another case. 
CNN's Cheryl Hubbard has more on his new legal battle. It goes beyond just physical harm. An emotional news conference Tuesday as one woman, Thalia Graves, spoke through tears about how an alleged assault by Sean Diddy Combs damaged her both physically and emotionally. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. Graves, through her attorney Gloria Allred, accused Combs and his bodyguard of drugging and assaulting Graves in 2001. The lawsuit states she was bound and raped while unconscious, and in November 2023, she learned the assault had been recorded and the video published. Viciously and violently forcing sexual contact. In the past year, Sean Diddy Combs has faced over 10 lawsuits alleging sexual violence. Perhaps the most disturbing bombshell to surface, this surveillance video showing Combs violently grabbing and kicking then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hotel in 2016. You can see here, Combs' newest lawsuit comes a week after he was federally indicted on charges including racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking and transportation for prostitution. He pleaded not guilty but was denied bail by a federal judge last week and must remain in federal custody. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. Graves says she suffers from severe depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and continued physical pain because of the rape. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. Coming up on the Rockbridge Report, Floridians brace for Hurricane Helene's imminent landfall with a storm surge of up to 20 feet. We'll tell you what that means for Rockbridge weather. When you're talking about 120, 125 mile an hour, potentially in Tallahassee, certainly on the coast as that makes landfall, those are not numbers that, that we've seen. This is Cami Knott with the Rockbridge Report. In the last couple of minutes, the rain has let up a little bit, but never fear, we've got some more rain coming in the next couple of days. For more details, tune in live at 5 to the Rockbridge Report. And later, our own Devin Bateman brings us the latest updates on how the hurricane will affect sports for teams in the Rockbridge area. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to the Rockbridge Report. Right now, several southeastern states are bracing for Helene's landfall, projected to be the strongest hurricane to hit the U.S. in over a year. CNN's Mary Bell Gonzalez is live in Stenhatchee, Florida, one of the state's coastal regions is expected to be hit the hardest. Mary Bell. Hurricane Helene is intensifying with every minute as it inches closer and closer to right. us. Many people in coastal towns just like this one in Stenhatchee are bracing for potentially catastrophic impact. Across Florida, a sense of urgency as Hurricane Helene nears. I mean, right, so rather be I'm safe than sorry, right? right? Preparations underway as Helene gains strength over the record warm Gulf of Mexico. The monstrous hurricane slated to slam into Florida's Big Bend Coast Thursday evening, bringing with it dangerous winds, flooding, and potentially life-threatening storm surges. When you're talking about 120, 125 mile an hour, potentially in Tallahassee, certainly on the coast as that makes landfall, those are not numbers that, that we've seen in recent years. Well, <laughs> I've got to get prepared for the storm. Mandatory evacuations issued for thousands of residents, nearly the entire state under alert. You know, but it's best to be prepared for the unknown because if you're prepared, you, you can manage it better and the crisis much, much better. At this sandbag location, all hands on deck. In this time of emergency, those serving time in Pasco County's correctional system. Hi ma'am, you're all set, okay? Now serving others. Helping by today with sandbags and really focusing on the residents of the community that are elderly or infirmed or you know need some of assistance. A couple years ago, I had to do it myself and I have a bad back, so it wasn't easy. So yes, I'm very thankful. And we also know that power outages now a major concern, not just for folks here, but for people across the state. More than 25,000 of families and people affected by those. We also know that at this hour, hundreds of flights are impacted by the storm. Reporting live in Steenhatchee, I'm Mary Bell Gonzalez. 
You know, speaking of the hurricane, my family's actually still down in Florida. I saw that it just barely skirted past them in Tampa Bay. Yeah, you know, Mackenzie, unfortunately, I heard it might even impact us right here in Rockbridge County. Cammie, why don't you tell us more? Yeah, that's right, Valentina. We're definitely going to be feeling it over the next couple of days, that rain. But as you can see in our live shot of downtown Lexington Main Street, the rain has stopped for right now, no. but we're still going to be experiencing it some in the next couple of days. Now let's take you to our current conditions in Lexington. Right now, it's a high of 74 today and a low of 67, so not much fluctuation in the temperature today. Barometric pressure is at 30 and 500 inches of mercury, and the wind speed is steady at three miles per hour. Humidity is very high at 86% today in Lexington. Now let's take a look at our radar. As you can see, we've got some spotty uh, rain in the region, and that is a result of the hurricane that is making landfall in Florida, and we're gonna see some more of that in the coming days. Now let's take a look at the region. In Lexington and Buena Vista, it is 74 degrees right now and cloudy with some spotty rain coming into tonight. Stanton is at 72 degrees and cloudy, and Charlottesville a little bit hotter at 76 degrees and cloudy with some rain as well. Lynchburg right now is experiencing some thunderstorms, some spotty ones, and it is currently 74 degrees. And then as we move west, Covington is going to be a little bit cooler at 67 degrees with some on and off rain, and Roanoke at 73 degrees and cloudy. And as we move into the weekend, tomorrow we've got some more showers, a um, little bit more than we experienced today. High of 74, low of 61. And tomorrow night, uh, the wind is going to be pretty bad as well. 15 to 35 miles per hour is expected. And then as we begin the weekend, we've got some clouds and possible showers on Saturday with a high of 79 and a low of 61. And then as we begin our week, we've got some clouds again and a high of 73 and a low of 60 on Sunday. And then cloudy again with some um, chances of showers on Monday, high of 70, low of 56. And Tuesday, a little bit hotter, with a high of 76 and low of 54 with some clouds and some more chances of rain. Back to you, Mackenzie and Valentina. Coming up on the Rockbridge Report, I'll be recapping last night's WNL volleyball game. After that, a cultural food festival celebrating Rockbridge's Latin American population. All that and more after the break. Welcome back to the Rockbridge Report. Um, Mackenzie, I heard you went to last night's WNL volleyball game. How did it go? Well, that's right. Uh, it's just the latest in the string of many wins. Uh, let's take a look at the Generals Volleyball. Good evening, Rockbridge. I'm here at Washington and Lee's Hull Camp Gym, where the Generals Volleyball team has extended their undefeated season with this shutout victory against Randolph-Macon College. And joining me here on court is head coach Brian Snyder, now coach. 14-0 sounds like a great start to the year to me. What do you attribute this victory streak to? Yeah, I think it actually started a little bit last year. We, we had a little bit of a rough patch with some injuries and some uh, poor results in the middle of last year and we made some changes to our offense and uh, inserted a couple of players uh, into the lineup who were freshmen at the time but now sophomores and they gained a lot of experience we played really well at the end of last year and we've really just carried that over um, and this team works extremely hard um, you know we're only really playing eight or nine players but in the practice gym everyone is playing so so hard so we see that level of play basically every day so i think when we come out here in the match it doesn't really surprise us also joining me here on court is senior captain Avery Myers. Now, Avery, 14 kills today. Tell me what fire came over you this game. Um, I think that our team is doing a really good job at pushing the tempo, especially Allie um, in the setter position is putting me in really good positions to score and spreading the offense really well, so putting a lot of seams in the block. So um, the number's great, but it's pretty much a result of everyone else around me putting me in a good position to score. Now the team sort of reached this halfway point in the season. How does the mentality change as you enter that second half? Honestly, I don't think that our mentality shifts throughout the season. We're always focused on getting 1% better in the gym every single day. Um, always working on things that we can improve. I think Coach does a really good job at planning really intentional practices. So even though we're undefeated, we have so many things to still work on, which makes coming into the gym for practice that much more exciting. Well, Avery, congratulations on a great game. Best of luck moving forward. And signing off with the Rockbridge Report, I'm Mackenzie Kane. Thanks for that recap, Mackenzie. Yeah, absolutely. We're actually joined now by our sports anchor, Devin Bateman. Devin, what can you tell us about Hurricane Helene's impact on local sports? Well, Valentina, we've just learned from Rockbridge County High School's principal, Mike Kraft, 
that Friday's football game has been moved up to tonight at 7 p.m. The Wildcats play on the road. Turns out WNL, VMI, and Perry McClure all have bye weeks this week. SBU is on the road in North Carolina. As for the latest scores, WNL men's soccer opened up conference playing with a win yesterday versus Bridgewater College 3-0 at home behind a strong performance from the Generals defense. 23rd ranked Generals Volleyball also kept the ball rolling, this time breezing by Randolph-Macon in three straight sets at home last night to cruise to a 14-0 on the year. VMI football fell to 0-4 on the year after a 32-10 loss at home against Spartans of Norfolk State last Saturday. But the Cadets women's soccer team earned a hard-fought 2-1 road victory against SoCon rival the Citadel to kick off conference play. SBU women's volleyball took down Mary Baldwin University in Stanton on Tuesday to win their second straight game, three sets to none. And SBU football lost their home opener to Maryville College Scots 54-6 on Saturday behind an offensive barrage of 570 total yards. Rockbridge County High School Wildcats varsity volleyball squad were back in action on the road Monday, defeating Harrisonburg three sets to one while Wildcats football team lost their fourth straight game on Friday at home versus Blacksburg High School, 44-20. Though it has been a different story for the Perry McClure Fighting Blues football team who defeated Stonewall Jackson High School at home 55-0, bringing them to 3-1 on the young season. And finally, Perry McClure's varsity girls volleyball lost their sixth straight match on Tuesday this time on the road to Eastern Montgomery Mustangs. A Devin, a soccer tournament, a Colombian food truck, and salsa dance performances are all in Rockbridge County. Hispanics are now the second largest minority in the region, growing by 66% in the county since 2010. As Alejandra Pacheco reports, the Latin festival organized by Project Horizon gave this community the ability to celebrate and share their culture with the rest of Lexington. But many of those attending say growth comes with challenges. The Hispanic population in Lexington has grown significantly in the past couple of years, but remains hidden amongst the white majority. The Latin Festival, organized by Project Horizon this past Sunday, gave them a space to embrace and share their culture with the rest of the community. A soccer tournament with teams from eight different countries, musical performances, and a variety of traditional Latin American foods were all part of the festival. At the beginning, the festivals were like very small, um, and we have been growing to like having 400, 500 people. For many, the event is a rare playtime because of daily struggles with jobs, the language barrier, and lack of legal permanent residence. The first one was the language barrier, of course. And after beating that, defeating that barrier, it's also about learning a job or skill that helps you stand out, move forward, and help your family. Many rely on Project Horizon's help with filing or translating documents. Thanks to Project Horizon, I got to study for my driver's license test, and we've benefited from events like these. It's also hard when relatives don't live nearby. I think the greatest challenge is thinking about the family we left behind in Venezuela. But events like the Latin Festival help people bond. We can build community like that and we can understand each other. Project Horizon offers resources for those in the Hispanic community looking for support. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Alejandra Pacheco. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.